Welcome to the discovery of the Hallettstonian Caesorea dragons. These are prehistoric sea dragons, marine reptiles that became extinct 483 million years ago, long before the dinosaurs. Now this is very new to science because so far science has only dealt with vertebrae land dinosaurs and this is what everybody's used to seeing so far, are just dinosaurs. But we don't have any dinosaurs up here at Hallettstonian Heights in northern Utah. No, we don't have any dinosaurs. This era of the Hallettstonians had become extinct long before the first dinosaurs ever became ever came around. Now, this is what we have. We have prehistoric sea dragons. We have a skull, and these are cartilage sea dragons, so there's no jawbone. So you have a skull, and then you have your crown spikes, and then you have your full and complete set of teeth, right, left, top, and bottom. Now, everything is in the Zoria repeat. All the pieces are just like this. They are a, a rearward warping triangular wedge. They're crowned on the front side and flat on the back side. They have an attachment base, and they grow to a specialized reinforced tip at the bottom. Now, uh, the skull has collapsed down into the mouth cavity and distorting the original location of the teeth since we don't have a jawbone. But this is what I think they're going to be looking like when we uh, reconstruct them. Now, like I say, these are sea dragons. And out here in Utah, we live on an ancient seashore. And this is what it looks like right now. So what's left of the ancient Pacific Ocean is just the... Uh, uh, the uh, Great Salt Lake, but we have Caesarea Dragon's graveyards at certain elevations along the Wasatch Front. Now, here is another depiction of one that we're currently excavating. This is Hilfildian Caesarea. Oh, no. Okay, now let's move down to the biological structures. Oh, my gosh. Stop. Okay, here we go, biological structures. Everything is in a biological structure. An attachment base growing to a tip. Uh, um, it's all blowing away. I had it all set up so we could discuss the biological structures and now everything is flying off our tables right here. See, attachment base growing to a tip has a definitive frame structure. Now, up in the graveyards, they're located at certain elevations. Great Salt Lake's down here now, but 540 million years ago, we had the Pacific Ocean here in Utah. Now, is what we get is a skull, and then you have your crown spikes, and then down below that, below ground, you have progressive uh, replacement teeth, and they're stacked up. And the teeth are in a duck-billed configuration, extending out and around the body. So at the surface, you just see the boulder, which is actually a skull. It has a complete right and left sides. And then below it, you have a full and complete set of teeth in the skull matrix collapse. And all those teeth are in these biological structures. Now, we spent a lot of time, 5,000 hours, working out the mathematics on the internal substructures. And there's a back half and a front half. The front half is crown. The back half is uh, flat, slightly concave. Now... Uh, we'll move up here and take a look at some of our biological structures. Right here, you have your attachment base, you have your growth core band. And this is the crown side, it comes down to a tip, it's a blunt leading edge and a double cutting serrated trailing edge. This is a crown spike from Leflitsky Caesarea. Here's your attachment base, your double cutting trailing edge and your blunt leading edge. Now all our pieces, always, they'll have an attachment base a blunt leading edge, and a double cutting trailing edge. And there's definitive mathematics associated to our pieces. Here we go again, you can see our growth core band. All of them have that. You see right, it divides front half and back half. And you have the right here, rights and lefts. And this is pretty typical of the, the atypical um, Azoria repeat your attachment base, your blunt leading edge, and your double cutting trailing edge. And we can just work our way down the line. Here you go, attachment base, crowned on the front side, your double cutting trailing edge. Here's one that was just recovered last weekend. But here's your attachment base. It's gonna come around into the trailing edge. Everything meets at the tip for its reinforced tip. You get a blunt leading edge, crown side, your double cutting trailing edge. 
Here's another example of a Zoria repeat. There's your attachment base. Here's your growth core band. Your crown on the front side, your blunt on the leading edge, double cutting on the trailing edge. Now these are some other examples that were just recovered last weekend. Another part of the graveyard. Always attachment base, growing down to a specialized tip. Every single piece in the graveyard is very specialized. With an attachment base, growing down to a specialized tip. Here's another example of it. Here's your attachment base, your blunt leading edge, and your serrated trailing edge. Now here's a tooth that was just recovered. Um, well, let's see. Well, I guess it was a week ago. This is from Hilfildian Caesarea, and this here's Hilfildian Caesarea before it was excavated. And this is a small replacement tooth right here, and it's probably only 12 inches long. But uh, here's your attachment base, your trailing edge, your blunt leading edge. And this is a spike off one of the Caesarea dragons, Hilfildian. has an attachment base and grows right up to a tip. Growth is always forward. Now, we've looked at a lot of those uh, biological structures. Now, Caesoreas, when we find them in the graveyard, they are just dirt and stone. You get a skull and a duck-billed set of teeth, and then the, the neck will come back into the body, and then you have your body spikes. Now, here is an example of Crawfordian Caesorea. We haven't excavated this in yet. But uh, the skull has slid off its teeth, but and then none of the teeth are showing at this point. I suspect they're going to be at least 29 inches on average, but it will have a full and complete set of teeth, has a large main spike, and it, all the spikes are in the um, Caesarea biological uh, repeat. Now, all the spikes come in rights and lefts. The skulls are actually a right and a left that have been fused together. That's the only... Right, it's the only Zoria repeat on the Caesarea dragon that has an equal right and left side. Normally, each repeat is crowned on the outside and flat, slightly concave on the inside. And here's the whole key to this discovery is the Zoria repeat. These are the graveyards and the locations of the different Caesarea dragons. Here's a reconstructive drawing that I've done. You got your skull, the eyes external, it's got eye plating. Uh, you've got crown spikes, highly evolved, and uh, you've got this multi-hinged jaw, and then your uh, large main spike on the males. And then here's one that we'd like to excavate before long. I'll turn this sideways. We've already done, we've already done exploratory um, drilling over here on the body and determined that they were all biological structures. And now we want to move over here and get, the, uh, and get the body spikes that are underneath the ground because we want a bunch of 36 inchers and this averages, their big ones are 63 inches on this particular Caesarea dragon. Uh, we need a bunch of these out of the ground so we can show those to the scientists. Now, like I say, this is Caesarea dragons and it, it's totally different. They're definitely not dinosaurs. You get your skull, a duck belt set of teeth, the males have a large main spike, uh, you got spikes all across the top half of the body. Then there's a blubber layer. The internal organs are down inside the body. And uh, this is this is what I'm thinking the, the jaw is starting to look like. It's a triple hinge. And, of course, everything's in that Zoria repeat. And like I say, the Zoria repeat has all those specialized features. You know, an attachment base, a specialized reinforced tip, front side, always crown. Crown is located forward of center. It has a blunt leading edge for piercing, a double cutting trailing edge for slicing. It's flat, slicey, slightly concave on the backside. With the growth core band, that's the internal external portion of it. Uh, three primary angles on the leading edge, five primary angles on the trailing edge, and the tip angles are 30 degrees and 70 degrees. And here's how we'd like to do the excavation. Here's the skull. It's a 10-foot skull. I imagine that the mouth is probably 30 feet. We've excavated all the neck spikes. They're averaging 63 inches, and they're all in biological structures. This is where we did a bunch of uh, exploratory work and confirmed all the uh, body spikes back here on the body. This is where we'd like to start next. Okay. Uh, these are the 
superzoreas. This is a male and female combination, same species that are buried in the graveyard, 300 footers. Uh, this is a reconstructive Caesarea dragon drawing. And we are the Hallettstonian Research Project, led by Mike Hallett, the discoverer. We're at caesarea.com. And we have discovered the prehistoric sea dragons, this uh, artist rendition of it. And on the reconstruction, they're, they're definitely going to be huge on the reconstruction. We're going to have to rebuild them once in the burial matrix collapse and then figure out the original living matrix. Now, our excavation at this point is Hillfieldian Caesarea. They're always duck build, so I've got the pilot holes there dug. This is what we found in the front of the duck bill. And then I have a bunch of the teeth sitting out here. There's a front tooth. Here's a rear tooth. And this is a 44 inch, 33 inch, 29 inch. This is a front tooth. And these are rear back teeth. This is a small replacement tooth. Uh, here's a big 42 inch rear top tooth. Uh, here's a 29 inch front tooth. 20 something inch uh, side tooth there on the top front. And here's a 44 inch bottom tooth. And then right here, this is a 33 inch uh, fang tooth at the very front of the skull. Now our objective this summer will be to excavate the skull and pull out the other fang tooth on the uh, left hand side. We've excavated the right hand side. Now we need, just need to excavate the left hand side so we can start matching up all the, uh, all the rights and lefts on the teeth. And here's another look at those biological structures. Totally predictable. Always an attachment base. They're crowned on the front side. It's a double cutting trailing edge and a blunt leading edge. This is a very, very small replacement teeth. And it uh, looks like we've lost some of our, our technology as it blew away. Now here we go, another substructure. The substructure format is always consistent within the Caesarea dragons. Now, uh, when you get up there, it just looks like ground, but when you look into it, you see that there's actually a Caesarea dragon sitting there. We have intact versions at a certain elevation, and then below that we have um, the remains that are left from the marine ecosystem from the Caesarea dragon's time era. These are measurements from actual um, Zoria repeats that we found in the graveyard. This in here is, uh, you know, 100. It's, it's large. Okay, and there's that front tooth on the Caesarea dragon that we're gonna, later on this summer, we're gonna go grab the other one. And when we excavated Hillfieldian Caesarea, you get your skull at 123 inches, and then you get all your teeth down in here on the right hand side. And they were all in, in the biological structures. But that, that's the key to the Caesarea dragon's discovery. It's all about shape, and it's all about the um, Azoria repeat. And the key is to understand its internal frame structure. It's absolutely consistent. And that makes it one of the greatest discoveries in history. We found the oldest, largest, and most advanced forms of prehistoric life ever discovered. So my name is Mike Kellett. I'm the discoverer. I've got 20,000 hours into this discovery, and I'm the uh, field research leader. So for any uh, questions or comments, please contact me. Thank you.